what have you done since we last spoke? What's good? Man, done a lot. I've been studying and studying. Let me see. So I did the um, 16 personalities quiz. You learn anything about yourself? Dude, some of it is crazy accurate. A lot of it is. And um, only like a couple things were kind of like, yeah, yes and no, but most of it was extremely accurate. Um, you mind if I the, ask which of the 16 personalities you are? Yeah, I sent you a, the link of the results, and then I realized I sent you – I meant to send you this breakdown, but I sent you the same thing twice on accident. So let me see. I have it somewhere here. Oh, here it is. Uh, wait a second. I'm just finding the file here. There it is. Oh, cool. I'm excited. Let's fire this up. So, you're an ENFJ. Yes, sir. I haven't coached anyone with that personality type it said it was like two percent of the population or something which is uh hard yeah. to believe but i yeah. that is unique to me so yeah. i'm definitely learning something as i coach you and what's funny is um sorry i'm just uh writing something down really quick um what's funny is the first session and you were like oh i think you're very introverted or something and i was like well the thing is, like, I was like, you know, uh, be focused and like, kind of quiet and listen, try to listen more than you talk, which I struggle with sometimes. But um, and I was like, actually, I'm really extroverted. If you see me at the table and I'm always talking and like everything, but one of the things it said when you read about this uh, was a lot of it was like this intuition as part of it. Um intuitive or something and it talked about um that this type is very good at reading the like emotions or the you know it, and adapting to different situations or something you know so if you're in one type of situation and you think i need to be like this kind of mood or this kind of thing you'll do that if i'm in another one i need to be like this so um this, some of the stuff was just crazy accurate i just pulled up the um do you think any of that has to do with your music background or your love of music? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, what were some of the things but, that stuck out to you immediately about your personality? Let me I'm, here. I'm looking here. Let me find it. So the um, strength and weaknesses page, like the second page, you know, where it breaks it down in detail. Like this stuff was so accurate. The thing that says reliable, like um. The one thing that um, protagonist bothers them the most is the idea of letting down a person or a cause they believe in. So it's like you can always be counted on to see it through. Like that's very true and like charismatic. Like you can um, like charm and popularity and stuff like that. Like when I'm – if I'm in the poker room and I'm like talking to the floor girl or like other people at the table or whatever, I'm like very like open and friendly and um, stuff like that or – you know, I'm just thinking in poker terms, but just in general. Um, and then it said a lot of them end up in like leadership roles, like teaching and stuff, which I was like naturally good at teaching, not just the one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons, but I taught middle school music for two years. And it wasn't like difficult for me to get up in front of, you know, 20, 30 sixth graders and be in charge and lead them and everything, you know? No, um, the, the, the critical right, part about all of this is actually the weaknesses. Were there any of the yes. specific weaknesses that stuck out to you? Man, like absolutely. Like, let me see. I'm looking at that now. These are, this is where it gets even more accurate. I think, um, too sensitive, like it says while receptive to criticism, um, it's easy for protagonists to take it a little too much to heart their sensitivity to others means that they sometimes feel problems that aren't their own and try to fix things they can't fix. So, so with, with that being said, have, have I offended you at all with some of the <laughs> criticism? 
No, not at all. I like I like criticism. I think it's more like um, I definitely see that in like um, more like non poker things. Like it's like very important a lot of times. Like if some if I think someone doesn't like me, like whether there's someone at the poker table or just I'm at a party with some mutual friends and there's someone there and I think this person doesn't like me. I just get inspired. okay. So it's, it's different when I criticize me. you because you respect my opinion. Yeah, yeah, and okay. if it's like it's it's like. I have to be like reminded, like, you know, not everyone likes you in life and that's okay. And you can't try to like fix things. And let's go back to like a poker table thing. Like, here's a perfect example of like, Oh, it says you're like a called me a, it says you're like a diplomat too. When you look at this personality type it says you're, um, so this happens all the time. And it just happened the other day where there was a guy at the table, like drinking, he was stuck and he was like dropping F bombs and like, a dealer sits down and he's like, sir, you've already done that twice. And, and you interjected and, yourself and became the mediator? Well, well, yeah. Like the dealer's like, sir, you can't do that. And the guy started being like, where are we? Are we at church? Are we at elementary school? And you were like, we're fucking poker room. And I'm like, hey, hey. I was like, he's just doing his job, buddy. You know, I, I know you're upset, man. I, that was a tough hand. You know, I'm, I always like butt in and I know that I shouldn't a lot of times. But it's like, it says this personality type like hates conflict and tries to fix things and um, will often be like a mediator. I was like, so true. And then, like, fluctuating self-esteem kind of goes along with too sensitive. It says protagonists define their self-esteem by whether they are able to live up to their ideals. And it's like if I have, like, a certain goal or even if it's as simple as, like, I'm going to get up today and do laundry and work out and go to the grocery store. And if I have these goals and these lists, which I do a lot, I make those things a lot. If I, like, somehow don't feel good and I just end up watching TV or something, like, I feel like horrible, like, oh, you had these goals and you didn't do it. But then on the other hand, when I do something and when I study poker or achieve things or whatever, it's like, it feels very gratifying, you know? And then, um, another thing on the weaknesses was struggle to make tough decisions. This is like huge. Anyone that knows me a lot will tell me when they have like a big decision. One of them was like moving to Maryland. I just like, this is when caught between a rock and a hard place, protect protagonists can be stricken with paralysis imagining all the consequences. Yeah, this is where actions. you and I diverge a ton yeah. because I'm the complete yeah. opposite of that. I'm extremely decisive and that the 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 suffix sis comes from uh the Greek uh suffix that that literally means to eliminate or cut off, like circumcise mm. or concise. Uh okay. So I'm okay with eliminating options that I know aren't good and going with uh, uh, one of the options that I know will produce better results than being indecisive. Right. Uh, and examples of that include me starting a lawn mowing business when I was 12 and not caring that I was undercutting the local lawn caring business, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So right. I didn't care that I offended that guy. Very different than you, right? I, I, there goes that I, little bastard in his lawnmower. I can just see them all. <laughs> yeah, man, I broke that guy's lawn mowing business when I was 12. I undercut him That's by awesome. 50%. Uh, and then when I was 14, I started uh, umpiring. And I did not care about offending either team either of the coaches or the fans, what I say goes, I'm the umpire and, and, uh, the umpire coordinator for the league that I was working for initially loved me because I would throw so many coaches out of the game. And if you get ejected from a game, you're not allowed to file paperwork <laughs> to complain about a, a, an official because you acted so inappropriately that it's not worth the the uh, umpire coordinator's time to speak to you so he loved me because i would just toss coaches out of the game and i didn't care that i make was, his job easier <laughs> and i didn't care that i was 15 you know so they're like 40 year old guys that come and argue with me at the plate and i would very theatrically throw them out of the game and, and there were there were some guys that were so out of line you would never believe this there were some guys that were so out of line with some of these play calls that both sides would cheer after I threw him out of the game. Like it, his, <laughs> the parents for his team would, would would hate these guys so much. Like some of these coaches that they would they would actually like respect the decision I made to remove him from the game. Right then, of Trust course, me, like I know, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I played soccer from like 
age 11 all through high school and like the, some of the parents were insane the parents would get kicked out of games because right but it, it's like stuff. you know i'm 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 uh officiating major uh like little league world championship games uh for like you know minnesota semifinals or i'm i'm officiating uh aau games for a lot of times like the kids are older than me Mm-hmm. And it's like the law of the jungle out there where I'm literally the only guy out there. I don't have a, a partner. I don't always have the best view. I have to hustle to make sure that I get the, the right view for each call. And then I have to make a decision and stick with it and keep 150 people in line at the same time. It's a very difficult job. And that's why I got paid so much for it because I was willing to make executive decisions. The same thing applied to being a critical care paramedic. Uh, it mm-hmm. didn't matter that I was 19 if somebody goes into cardiac arrest or uh, my partner screws up the medication dosage and something happens, I have to take accountability for that and make sure that people are okay. Uh, right. The same thing applies to poker pressure situations. I've never had any difficulty with that. I've always taken accountability for my actions and I, I, you know, I, I take all the glory and I also take all the downfall if I'm wrong. Sure. Uh, for you, you might struggle with that, and maybe you need to develop some ways to overcome that, and I'm, and you know maybe get a little bit more introspective and start thinking about that. Yeah, I'm very competitive too. Like I remember as a kid, like playing basketball, I was like, oh, I got, I have to win. I really want to win, and like I don't feel like that in poker because I know you lose a lot of the time. But what bothers me, like just yesterday, I was really frustrated because it's like, okay, I um, there's this guy. Um, opening wide and he's from like the hijack or something and I have queen jack suited and I've already three bet him a couple times or and I've already three bet him once in the last orbit and uh he just folded pre flop like, I'm gonna do this again I don't care if we go post flop and so I three bet him with queen jack suited um and you know he calls out of position and the flop is like queen five three rainbow he checks and I decide um this is probably wrong, but I decide this time to check it back because um, I'm hoping to get two streets of value from like the lower pocket pairs that might be more likely to get it on the turn and, and river, I'm estimating. And also it could induce a bluff and the board is dry. Although, you know, I hate just letting a free, um, you know. I'm sorry, what's the board again? I, I blanked out. I have queen jack suited in this queen five three uh rainbow i think it's okay to check back some of the time because you only have to protect against an ace and a king yeah and there's you know there are worse queens out there that have me like ace queen and king queen so i'm not saying i'm necessarily pot controlling but there's a little bit of that in my mind but it's more about inducing bluffs and i don't think i can get more than two streets necessarily anyway um anyway so i check it back and then the turn is a deuce so it's uh, queen five three deuce and it's bringing two hearts now, and as planned he does bet um, almost pot and um, I call and the river is uh, a four so there's you know an ace makes a straight and he bets like the same bet again that he bet on the turn you're like oh, they just have an ace here so often and I end up calling you know just because it's such a small bet. But it's like that – anyway, so it's not like losing the money or losing the hand that like frustrates me or, or like can be like – you know, because you probably have that and you're just like, okay, whatever. That's what happened. And, and, and like I understand that like I didn't necessarily do that much wrong and you're going to get sucked out on all the time. It happens. But what bothers me is this like – the time that you invest to study and to say, okay, th- what's the, what are good three betting situations? I think this is one of them. Then you do it. The guy calls out of position. Then you flop it. Then you have a plan and you think this is how I'm going to extract the value. And then you still lose all this money. And then to top it all off, someone else is like, nice hand, man, to the guy that want you know him. I, I told my roommate, if it feels like, it almost feels like you're like playing – like you you trained for basketball and you like, you get up and you go to the gym every day and you do all these drills and then, you know, you work on your shot and then you go and you, you're playing this game and you're like, man, you're hitting like 60% of your jump shots, which is great. And you're like getting all these steals and playing great. And then somehow there's some random rule at the end of the game. There's some like obese guy sitting at the end of the court with a hot dog and he just like closes his eyes and just 
lobs a, a full court shot and somehow they give him 300 points for making that shot and he wins. That's what it, feel, that's what it feels like losing to that guy. You know what I'm saying? I know that's weird. I've, I've never had trouble <laughs> coping with those situations. Yeah. I, I've always viewed stuff like that very differently. Like going back to me mowing lawns when I was 12, the second year I did that, I jacked the price up to 75 because I was doing such a good job. It was basically a professional lawn mowing service and I could still do it at 75 for less than any other service would offer and bag all the leaves and, uh, trim the hedges, you know, uh, we'd whip the, the, near the, uh, fence and take all the leaves to the compost site. I was doing all of that. Mm-hmm. So I jacked the price up and the whole neighborhood thought I was gouging them. So I, I said, well, why don't you go back <laughs> to the other service that does less quality work for more money? And, there you go. and then they called my parents. They're like, who is your son that thinks he could just come up, come over here and jack up the price without, without, uh, you know, consulting with us. And our, my parents were like, well, he's right. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> so I had no, I had no problem offending people like that at all. I was like, go, go, if you want inferior service for a higher cost, go ahead. <laughs> I don't care. So, uh, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's not, the, it's not like I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh, I was up this amount. Now I'm stuck. And now this, and, uh, I got sucked down. It's the feeling of like investing time and then having the situation finally comes around. You've been sitting there patient and then you execute a strategy and it doesn't work. And no, just like every, every from now on, when you're in a situation like that, I want you to ask yourself this. <clears throat> Did I make the best decision based off of the information that I had at the time? Yes or no? Yeah. If the answer is yes, why do you care what the result was? Exactly. It's always process over results. Every yeah, time I'm definitely it's process way better over that than results. Be, but it, no, but you need to part of that. It completely so, like, rewire the way you think yeah. about everything. Process over results always. And cool. it carries over not just from the poker table. It turns into everything. Like, like uh, uh, you know, two years ago, somebody completely told in my car because she ran a red light when she was texting on her phone and almost killed me. And my parents were like freaking out, thinking I'm responsible driving home late. And I was like, it's process over results. Like, was I driving well at the time that this occurred? Yes. Did my insurance cover the cost of the damage to the car? Yes. Am I okay? Yes. You know, so I wasn't concerned with the result. I was concerned with the process. Uh, But my parents don't think like that. Maybe you don't think like that, but but you can train yourself to... To, to cope with situations like that. Sure. Cool, man. And um, yeah, but it's definitely interesting. I'm glad I did the test. And um, the, the only thing that I was like, well, yes and no, was like it kept talking about this this personality type that I am is like so altruistic and all and they want to lead people and they want to, you know, they're so selfless and they're a concern of others above themselves. And I'm like, I mean, sometimes in some situations, but I'm also very like, selfish. I don't mean that as like a negative, like insulting someone calling them selfish. I mean, I'm very concerned about like myself right now. I'm, you know, trying to focus so much on poker to do well, to make more money, to better my life and everything. And, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of being a professional poker player. And that has nothing to do with being altruistic or, or, you know, like trying to lead people and improve the world and all this stuff. So that was kind of like, I don't think Listen, I was like, you, you are improving sense. the world. Okay, yeah. and don't let anybody tell you different yeah. because you have a, a genetic responsibility to financially break all of the degenerate gamblers in the world so they're less likely to reproduce. And as a, <laughs> there you go. And yeah. as a result, you're improving society in the process. Okay, because all of the money need to be like <laughs> all of the money needs to be taken from genetically weak individuals and put in the bank accounts of those who are capable of managing those funds to prevent the genetically weak people from reproducing. Okay. That's well, called, you go. that's called capitalism. And then, okay. So, you know, don't let Bernie Sanders, uh, and, and all of his socialist ideology, all ideologies, uh, confuse you that that is how yeah. the world works. It's the law of the jungle. Break these people. 